hijacking, which is fantastic. And this uses a technique which I saw at a conference recently, the, um, the Grimm conference. There was a guy saying he has found so many vulnerabilities just by using this tool, Process Monitor. And it really is wonderful. And so the main point of this project is you learn the awesomeness of Process Monitor and also how DILs load. So, um, yeah, first you got to disable Windows Defender and install Metasploit, which I've already done, and then add an exclusion to tell it to quit deleting Metasploit on it. Okay, so once you got Metasploit on your machine and Windows Defender told to stop nuking it, then you can create a malicious DIL with this command. So let me... Um, Go to my downloads folder and I'm going to go to downloads and I'm going to make a directory called say demo. All right, go in there so I get a nice clean directory with nothing in it. All right, and now I'm going to make this. Um, uh oh, I shouldn't be so sloppy. I'm about to make malware. So let me start by make excluding uh, that from my Windows Defender. So we've been through this before. Windows Defender Settings. Um, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make a directory called Malware. All right, and then go in there. Then I can, this I'll remember, that directory is going to be excluded from scanning. So it's Virus and Threat Protection and Settings and exclusions and add a folder called downloads malware okay there we go all right so now i can run metasploit in that folder and create malware in this folder and it shouldn't just nuke it on me which is what would happen so this is the path to msf venom and this is going to make a shell bind TCP and make a DIL piece of malware. That's all this does. This is the exploit. This is a typical 64-bit shell, which is just a command shell. And this, and I'll bind to a TCP port by default, port 4444. And this will make the output inform DIL. So it's not an executable file. It's a library. And this is the name of it, shellbind.dil. I just gave it that name so I know what it is. So this is going to create a malicious library. All right. <laughs> All right. Not complains about using some old Ruby functions, but it still works. And this is extremely common for hacking tools. All right. So it's made a DIL file, 8,700 bytes. And there it is, shellbind.dil. If I can somehow trick some executable into running this shellbind.dil file, it should then start a listening port on 4444 and hand remote control of my machine over to anybody that connects to that. So I need to turn off the firewall, which I think it's off, but let's take a look. Fire. Firewall and network protection. And we are here in public network and the firewall is off, so that's fine. So the firewall is not going to block this connection. Not that it really matters. I'm only going to connect locally. I don't know if the firewall applies to loopback connections, but anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So now uh, I'm going to try and trick this service into loading that DIL. And here's where we get to have fun with uh, um, procmon. So first I wrote services. And this is a simple way to get started. I'm going to use a Windows service. And there are a whole lot of Windows services that don't really matter much. And you can mess with them and break them, and they won't really hurt anything under normal conditions. And this one here is the Distributed Transaction Coordinator. So it's down here. There, Distributed Transaction Coordinator. This coordinates transactions if your, your operating system is connected to a database. And this operating system is not being used as a database server, so this service is fine. I, I mess with this service, and I'm not going to break anything that would bother the end user. So it's a good thing to tie to malware. If I go to Properties and log on, originally this service was loading as something else, like Network Service, but I changed it to run a system. So just for this project, I'd like to run system, so I'll get a system shell when I'm done. So 
That's all I've done is change its privileges, and now I can start it. But when I start it, I want to see what DILs it's going to load, so I'm going to view them in Process Monitor. So, you load Procmon, which is a tool we're pretty familiar with here. We've used it before. And the only thing tricky about Procmon is you have to figure out what the right filters are. And the filters I want to have here are a process name with msdtc and a path ending with dil. So the process name here is wrong, so I'm going to remove that one and say process name contains ms DTC for Distributed Transaction Coordinator or something like that. Uh, MSDTC. Okay, good. And so I add that one. So now I'm going to find processes that contain this string in the name and that end in some... Oh, there's the wrong thing here too. So let's remove that. And I want to find the path ends with just dil, dot dil, not version dot dil. Okay, there we are with dil. So I add that one. Okay, now I got the right filters. So now I say OK, and now I start sniffing. So it's now reading, I see 47,000 events, and that should be counting up. Um, and now I'm going to start this per service. And, hmm, didn't get anything here. Maybe I, um, hmm. Oh, I think it is stopped. Oh, OK, I fouled up. All right, I'm going to stop it again. That uh, magnifying glass icon confused me. So I'm going to erase the old stuff. Now it's sniffing and counting up. That's what I wanted. OK. Now I start it. And there we go. So I see all the libraries it loads while it's loading. Now I'm going to stop it, because if you leave this Procmon running for long, it'll fill up all the RAM and crash the machine, which is kind of annoying. But now I got all the information about this loading processes. So here it is. It loaded ntdil, it loaded kernel32, it tried to load some kind of dill, and it succeeded. So it's loading a lot of dills, and that's all working. But now, if I look, notice the C Windows system. Now, those are loading dills from where dills really belong. Microsoft dills belong in the system. So that's all fine. But if I go down here, it's eventually going to load a dill and have trouble loading that dill. And uh, let me go down to see the one I'm looking for is this one here, OCI.dil. And it is going to try to load it from System32, but it's going to not find it, which is going to be name not found. So let's just watch for these name not found in that column. He loads a lot of dills. Right there it is, right there. Name not found, OCI. So. This dill from System32, it does not find that dill. Now, this is some kind of mistake made by the coder of this process. I'm guessing this process is left over from an earlier version of Windows or something when it loaded that dill, and they moved it into this version. And so it has an old reference to that dill somewhere in the code, so it loads it. But then when it doesn't find it, it doesn't crash and stop. It just keeps going. So this is a bug in the code a possibly minor bug, but as we're going to see, a pretty serious one, because it means if I can put a dill here with that name, I can trick this process into loading it. And that's what we're going to do. So now it's pretty easy. All you have to do is stop the process and copy shell bind into that location, because there is nothing there right now. So in an administrator command prompt, I can execute these commands. And so if I go here, I stop it. Oh, access is denied. That's rude. Oh, okay, I don't seem to have an administrator command prompt. That'll do it. Right click, right click, run as administrator. Okay, let's see if that does it. Okay, now I can stop that process because I, I think it's going to lock the dill. I want it, Now I'm going to copy my malware. Now I'm not in the right directory though, so I'm not going to do this yet. I'm going to move to the right directory, which is IE user. Um, users, rather. Okay, users. IE user. Downloads. And I think I'm working in malware. Let's make sure it's here. Yeah, there's my shell bind. So now I can um, get this command here again. All right. 
Okay, I've now copied that file. Okay, now we're ready. Now I can look at this again. So I clear this old stuff with the eraser. Then I start sniffing again. And I wonder if I want to change. I think I do want to change it to look just for OCI.dil now. So I'm going to change my filters to only see OCI.dil. I don't care about anything else now, and otherwise it's going to drive me nuts. So let's take this one and remove it and replace it with OCI.dil. All right, and now start sniffing for that. And now go to here and do net start. All right. And now you see it succeeds in loading it. No apparent problem. This is the standard stuff that happens. So I can stop sniffing. And now I should find a listening shell. Notice how this is hanging because it's running malware instead of proceeding past this. So that terminal window is busy. But if I open another one here and I do netstat minus an pipe more, I now have port 4444 open, listening. And so if I do ncat 127001 4444, I now have a shell into my machine another shell. You know, I already have a shell here, but I could connect from any machine on my network and connect. I have a listening shell there. So that's pretty cool. And that's using Metasploit malware. So now the trick is, when you're done, it's going to keep on automatically restarting that process and automatically reopening the listening shell. So this is a very primitive sort of uh, long-term rootkit you've got here. So to fix it, I might as well do this. So I'm going to have to do it anyway. I need to restart the machine. Let's close whatever I can here. To make it less irritated. Okay, then um, I need to restart it. And then I'm going to need to find the process ID of the listening process and kill it. So I'm going to use Resource Monitor and Task Manager to do that. So this should not take too long to restart. I'm going to restart anyway. All right. Now I need to kill the malware and then delete that OCI file, which is the malicious DIL. This is part of why I really don't mind using trial versions of Windows for these things, because when you're messing with malware, you pretty much mess up the machine. You need to just throw it away and build a new machine now and then anyway. There's no point getting too attached to it. Okay, so now I want to use Resource Monitor and find the listening process that's listening on 4444. So it's on a Network tab, Listening Ports are down here. I can sort by port. And so if I go down here, I'll see 4444. So it's 3816 is the PID of the thing I need to kill. So I can open Task Manager and go to Details. And here I can see things with PID, and I'm looking for uh, 3816. So it's uh, here. So I can delete that, End Task, and say, yes, I do want to end it. OK, now it's no longer running the OCI.dil. Now I should be able to just delete it from an administrator command prompt. And so I've got, there's the command, delete C, Windows System 32, OCI.dil. All right. And notice here it is freaking out about something. Um, so it's turned my Defender back on. And I don't quite know what it's finding. But you know, uh, when you restart it, it'll turn Defender back on. And apparently, all the nasty things I've done on here, I've let some of my malware escape the... In fact, I might have found this OCI.dil because I didn't exclude Windows System 32. 
that's probably what it found because it will totally find Metasploit payloads. Metasploit payloads are not a secret to antivirus companies. So anyway, let me just, all right, so I think that's enough for this video.